Hello everyone, this is Josh from Monroe County Public Library. Today I'm going to talk to you about another piece of digital creativity at home software that can be used for free. And this time it's Godot. You can get it from godotengine.org. And what this is is a game development engine in the vein of something like Unity or Unreal. Now this does have some differences. There are, there are certainly feature differences. Uh, Unity and Unreal are you know, managed by professional um, game companies, but that doesn't mean that this Godot engine isn't useful. So it's a super lightweight. It, I think on my Mac machine, it, it downloaded under 75 megabytes, where something like Unity is you know, tens of gigabytes, and this is all free. So anything that I develop on this platform I don't have to worry about royalties or anything like that. If they're my assets, I own them, and you know I can just publish my game. It, you, this also has the ability to publish on different platforms, so you know Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, you can both install this engine on there and develop games for these systems. So Godot is again very feature rich. I recommend you go to download, check it out, and you know, play around with it. But today, what I'm going to talk about is the web editor. So the web editor is a new piece of software that Godot has developed. And what it does is it brings the game engine and you into your web browser. So you can bring your game in and edit anything that you've created. Now, there are some limitations here, and we'll, but we'll visit those here in a minute. So uh, go into Godot engine, go to more, and go to web editor. So I'm going to click on that. And the first thing it's going to tell me here is important. Please read before continuing. It is This web editor is not for production. So if you're making a professional game and you, you really need to keep track of your data and make sure everything works perfectly, don't use this. Go back and install the actual Godot engine onto your computer, do things locally, and then you shouldn't have to worry. Um, you can go to web editor documentation to see what the limitations are. Probably the most important one that I've found so far is the inability to export. So you can bring something in and it acts like a testing ground. So you can move sprites, you can change scripts, you can delete things, you can add things and see how that behaves um, and you know do that testing. But it doesn't have a standard export option. However, you can actually export. I will show you a workaround uh, here, at, here later. Uh, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Don't Show Again. But before I do that, I'm going to say, do read over the web editor documentation and know what it says in there that you're limited by. So I'm going to hit OK. And if you want to look at that again later, there's also a link here. So I need something to work on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Try the example, so I'm going to hit download, or try this example. It's going to download an example, it's like two megabytes, so it's pretty small. And I'm going to go to choose file. Now this only works with zip files, so I'm going to click download.zip here. And I think that there are certain structural things that you have to um, observe whenever you're making a game in this web browser version. Uh, so it seems like whenever I tried to open a different project from uh, besides this example, it didn't load some of my assets. That may be a limitation of this web engine, but I, I would say if you open up this demo and you look at how they structure things and you follow that, you probably have good luck. Uh, similarly, if you just go ahead and start the editor without a project and you save that, I would presume that it gives you a good format that you can pull in later. All that aside though, it's kind of getting off, off track. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Start Kiddo Editor. And this is going to uh, import my zip file here. So it might take just a second. There we go. And the first thing it says, please choose an empty folder. So what this is doing is actually creating a cached project on your machine. So it's stored locally. Um, I'm sure you can dig around and find these files. Again, don't rely on that. <laughs> if you clear your browsing data or something like that, 
you might lose it. Um, so what you need to do to get started here is just hit create folder. And this creates a uh, folder called preload in that cached area. This isn't stored anywhere other than, I think, just on your local machine. And you can see home web user slash preload. There it is. I got this nice little green check mark. I'm going to hit install and edit. It'll say that you're installed co correctly. If you have an error, it'll tell your, tell your errors there. And you get this busy screen here. So what this is, is what you would see in the Godot engine if you opened it yourself on your machine. So just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open my Godot engine. If we get to the right folder here, we'll go open up Godot. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up a uh, random thing here. I'm just going to hit this demo with C sharp. And I'm just going to hit uh, open anyway. We don't need to get this actually working, which it doesn't seem like it's going to. And you'll see this very similar window. That's because it's the exact same window that you get on the web. So I'm going to quit this and go back to that web editor. Just let that close in the background. And you can see I have like the different places to interact with my scenes, interact with my nodes, my file system. Uh, I can click on individual actors. Uh, so I can zoom in by using the scroll wheel. I can click in the scroll wheel to pan around. And if I click on an actor, I can see that they, I can see their animation stuff here. I can uh, edit their scripts here. I can hide or show them. I can play with their different physics that they have applied to them. There's, you know, I can do everything in here that I can do on, you know, uh, the, the software on my machine. And you can do stuff like move things around. So it's just click and drag. And, you know, that changes what happens in your game. You can also uh, test your game. So if you do change something, you have this little play button up here. I'm going to hit play, and it's going to load my game. So it took a second there, but I think that, yeah, it's just the arrow keys with the up button for jump. And I think there's a cannon or something, or there's a gun. Yeah, so I have a gun here. You can see that those bullets have physics. Um, the enemy had physics there, too. It, uh, it didn't fall like I'm, I think it was probably supposed to, but you can see that I have, you know, sounds, I have coins that I can collect, uh, you know, maybe if I was going to give this more features, I could have like a little score thing, or maybe a timer that you have to observe, uh, I can maybe give my character uh, damage whenever it touches an enemy, and, you know, I can just, you know, mess around with this and see how things work. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and uh, to stop it, I'm actually going to hit this stop button here. And now I want to show you that you can change things on here. So whenever we started there, we saw that in this first area, we have our character, and we have these two enemies. These enemies uh, drop down on their respective platforms here. Uh, they both have uh, physics body 2D applied to them, which basically just means that they have collision and they have to abide by gravity. So they will fall to the ground at the start of the level. Um, what I'm going to do actually is just delete this enemy here. So like I said, I can move it. Actually, before I delete it, I'll show you that I can move it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And it'll take a second to kind of reset here. And you can see that now that enemy, instead of being on this platform, is right in front of me. So I've just changed something about the way that the game works right there. I mean, it was that easy. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to stop this. And you can move things around. Like I said, you can change uh, your sprites and things like that. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select the second enemy. And I'm going to right click his little node here. And I'm just going to hit delete node. Uh, I mean, I could, you know, move it or hide it or, or stop it from working, but I'm just going to hit delete, just get rid of it. That'll be super easy. And now you can see the enemy's not there. I'm going to hit play. It's going to, we're going to, it's going to take a second again to reset. And there's no enemy here now. So right there you can see that I can 
imp I can put in my game, you know, I can test it out, I can change things here. You know, I can go through and, and dig through my tile sets. I could probably change this. I could add a background or something like that. I could change any of my scripting. Godot is very powerful. So anything that you think that you can do in Unity, I, I would presume that you could probably implement it in here. Uh, there is also 3D, so this is not just 2D. And I'm going to show you on the project in the export options, so let me go to export. So it's not going to work. Um, the default is, here is the HTML5 runnable. So this is a web-based game. Uh, so if you exported this, it would be something you ran in your browser. But you could also export to Android, iOS, HTML5, again, uh, Mac, uh, a Windows Store app, or a desktop app, and Linux. I think that Godot can also do consoles. Um, particularly, something that comes to mind is the Nintendo Switch, so you can do that. But like I said, if you try to export, you get all these errors, it doesn't work. So, what I'm going to do to export this is go into Project, Tools, and then I'm going to download the project source. It downloads this project.zip. And what I'm going to do is actually close this, the editor here. And I want to show you that a couple things. So I'm going to hit Start Godot Editor first before doing anything. And it loads this platformer 2D here. You can see that it is in this little area that I can, I can work on it. So I'm going to hit Close out of that and then open this uh, project. So I'm going to hit Edit. And it, since it's stored in the cache of my machine, you can see that it has retained the changes that we made. Um, similarly, I'm going to close this editor again. Let's say that you're on a different machine, but you downloaded that project. So what I'm going to do is hit uh, Choose File. And this time I'm opening the project, which again is this same exact thing as this first one. So let me find my project.zip, which should be in my downloads. Project does it. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And then I'm going to start the editor. And then I'm going to have to make a new file because this, we're going to say that this first one we're not, we're not using anymore. Imagine that we've gone to a different machine and we want to edit this project on in the web. So I'm just going to call this test2 and create the folder, install and edit. And now you can see it created another platform 2D, and it was called Test2. So this is actually the same thing here again as the first one, but this is a different implementation. So we have uh, both the first one and the second one. So it stores these things locally, and you can export and then re-import to um, your to a different browser. You don't have to worry about losing your stuff. I'm sure that later on they'll implement uh, a way to export reliably without having to go through that, but this is a workaround that works right now. And again, I can you know make my edits and change things around here, mess with my scripts, and you know edit the game. So I could delete this actor now and you know get rid of it. So now my person has a little bit easier of a time. Uh, getting through this level here. And, you know, you can do all the stuff that you want to do in here that you can do on Godot Editor. So go here, go online, try this out. Um, make a program from scratch, see what the limitations are, uh, read the documentation, and create a very cool game, and hopefully you'll enjoy this. So with that said, we'll see you in the next one.